Let's jump to this next story um, about Bud Light, because this is big. From the Post Millennial, bottling plants shut down after Bud Light sales tank amid Dylan Mulvaney partnership. So the news is 645 jobs lost, employees out of work after the R-Dog group shut down two plants. According to WRAL, it was because there was a decrease in demand falling Bud Light sales. And thus, they had no reason to make bottles anymore because Bud Light doesn't need them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is winning the culture war and this is substantive, but there was always going to be collateral damage. I feel bad for the people who lost their jobs because of this. Well, but it's, it's, it's the fault of Bud Light. Well, there's, it's, also kind of the, it's really tragic, but there's sort of the other side of it. It's not like America's drinking less beer. So maybe there are 450 or 500 more jobs created, another plant making the bottles. And, ho- you know, but I know the company's still wildly profitable. This is sort of the same trick that Amazon does. It's not a Budweiser plant. It's a subcontractor. So right. it's the subcontractor that has to eat all the dirt yep. and the bad decisions that, that the, the uh, contractor made. Yep. And uh, InBev is a, what is it, Belgian-Brazilian company anyway. So I'm not, no offense, I'm not too concerned with if they go bankrupt. I mean, I'm not all gung-ho on America right now, but I'd like to see these people go get a job with an American brewing company like Yingling or something. Yingling's Ho- Hopefully, expanding. if Yingling sales skyrocket, Molson, Coors, you know, whatever then there will be bottling demand. But it's interesting the point you bring up. People are still buying beer. So they're still, they still need to bottle beer. So what's happening? These other, these other uh, bottling plants are doubling their workload and these people are getting laid off. Not really a great situation, but I, I just want to say like, this is actually a sign of permanent economic damage to a brand that decided to get woke. The damage to the brand probably can't be overstated. Can't be undone either. No. no. You could also get a job with ultra right beer. I'm not sure if conservative dad's ultra right is hiring at the moment, but I'm sure they will be soon. I just drank well, like six of those. Of those I imagine weekend. the place that, <laughs> that, a lot of beer. that, yeah, that lost the 500 jobs. I imagine that is probably not strategically located near another place where these people can just transfer over to another brew, uh, another bottle. You know, what's saddest about this is that uh, these people lost their jobs. Some are probably not going to be able to afford their mortgages. It's going to cost them their marriages, cost them their children, cost yeah. them everything whereas the ceo of anheuser-busch see he's still employed he's still having yeah. the guy at the top he's, he's doubling still raking down. it in they're and, they're they're subsidizing a lot of these uh these companies that would be carlos brito is his name he's brazilian guy they did can yeah. the CEO of the anheuser. woman that uh was oh no not yeah but do you think they, they, they're was. denying it but it's been reported that her the the woman uh, and the the guy have been like two people were removed. Well, you know they got a fat severage package. They're not out on the street. They're so, not like oh, well. these, these blue collar people in North Carolina. Well, no, no. I, I Official, take... Officially, uh, here's what I think happened. Officially, they're not fired. They're on leave. But uh, literally, according to sources in the company, they are considered completely severed from the company. The reason they're not firing them is because Anheuser Busch fears ret- a lawsuit. They, they, they fear that they'll get sued, some labor dispute. So by putting them on an indefinite leave and saying nothing, they can get rid of them. They're fired effectively, but officially they're not fired. But they're also going to become folk heroes on the left. They're going to get a well-paid job with the uh, any number of left-wing groups that are supportive of what they did. So they're going to land very well. Maybe, I don't have any doubt. Maybe, but the left is clearly losing. I mean, re- re- remarkably. I mean, this is catastrophic i think virtue signaling loses and it especially loses in business man when you're all you care about is making a profit nobody cares what you think yeah but who's bearing the i I get it and i guess companies are now a lot more cautious about doing anything woke right but look at what happened here and look who actually paid the price these blue collar workers who probably vote the way we'd like them to vote who are good, loyal Americans, they're the ones out of their job. The people who are responsible for the decision, they're getting golden parachutes. They're going to get go work for GLAAD, one of the left-wing homosexual sh- groups or something. They're going to do great. They should have quit when this happened. So when the controversy started and you saw sales declining and the stock was tanking, you've had three months to find a different job. You mean the bottling factory yep. people? I don't know if it's as easy for them as we might... I, I, didn't say it was I, easy. I, I, not didn't one, say it was I, easy, but I get it. I you can you, see the storm coming, and I'm sorry. I'm not happy these people are losing their jobs. However, I am not going to stand in support of people who are propping up what Bud Light was doing. I don't think they even had any awareness of it. They're just they're just shift workers who probably didn't barely finish high school, if anything like that. I don't think they had. These are pure civil. Like there are people who know better. If people that's are true, I have less 
sympathy for them. All right. The idea that you, okay, look, what Bud Light was doing with Dylan Mulvaney, I believe is the banality of evil. The algorithm is propping up this Borat-like character that is insulting to most people, and you, working at these factories and supporting Bud Light, are, a fa are, are one of the individuals holding up that machine, engaging in the banality of evil. I don't blame people for not knowing, because people try to do good. And you know, we, we try to inform them, but I'm not going to shed a tear if there is an evil organization doing evil things. You are helping them. And then, like, if, if, if you're the henchman for a supervillain and you get fired because the villain's been arrested, I'm not going to be like, oh, that's really sad. He's out of job. I'll be like, good, less henchmen for the villain. I, I just don't think you can hold somebody with, like, a 90 IQ who's doing everything they can within the law to raise their family and has no, doesn't have the capability of seeing what you and I can see because we're in this world. I just... They're just innocent civilians that got caught up in this. I, I, I disagree. They are components of a machine that is engaging in cultural destruction, decay, and the banality of evil. The only reason I, I don't blame them as individuals for marching in lockstep with an evil machine. But if we're going to stop the cultural degradation, they have to lose their jobs. Well, but, the t but the people who made the decisions are not punished at all. And they're just going to go on to the next company and do it again. The, the people at the bottom are holding this machine up. I do not believe the goal is to intentionally hurt the regular workers. But even if you want to punish them, there's no amount of punishment that's going to make them understand what they need to understand to fix this. Then we're in agreement. The only thing you can do is dismantle the machine. And that means the people at the bottom are going to lose their jobs first. There's nothing else you can do. You're not you're never going to get even if they fire the CEO, you're talking about cutting off the head of a Hydra Two more grow back in its place. These individual workers, the bottling plants that are producing Bud Light and selling it are generating the profits for an evil machine. Well, you could seize all, the company th with the government and then no, strip no, the corporation. So, but, but these, so I mean, that's one replaced. tactic. I mean, they're just so easily replaced if one. they decide, oh, we're all going to quit. Let's just move the plant to Mexico or something like that. It's the next thing. It's the people. But that's the not what happened. The demand dropped so much the plants don't exist anymore, which or is a good the, outcome. The demand shifted to another brand somewhere else, which may or may not be in the United States. I get, we're probably yeah. not going to agree on this. I think the enemy is the, the snakes at the top. And you just, you, it's like you can't hold these people. They're, it's not even if you want to hold them accountable. You just can't because they're not capable of being held accountable. And no, they, like, they, look, look, you are correct. The problem is the leadership of Anheuser-Busch. Michael Dukaris, But they have by a the standing army in front of them blocking you from putting in, from stopping the evil practices. Well, I, th I think we, have, we succeeded in a way because, look, these guys are going to not make as much money as they would have otherwise. Two people who are pretty high profile kind of lost their jobs and going to have a tough time of it. So they... And we can see the effect is because all these companies that are so eager to celebrate Pride Month, you know, regardless of what you think of it, they kind of toned it down a little. And some other companies sort of backed Starbucks, off some of the woke stuff. Target, yeah, they, et cetera. they backed. So, to me, the the profits for the people at the top getting cut is really all they care about. So if you can hit that, that's kind of how you adjust the culture. But that is the collateral damage that will trickle down and hit the bottom workers. Well, there's a reason it's called collateral damage. Right. So, it's so my, my point is. I want these people to find jobs. I don't blame them for the actions of the organization, but it is a good thing there that these jobs were lost. I see Bud Light shrinking is good. That means people lose their jobs. I don't know if it's corporatism or capitalism that protects the CEO and the owners of the company when they they can just liquidate their work staff and they don't have to pay any price for destroying their company's profits. You would say like that's why communism. Some people might want it because the government can go take the company away and say you misused it. You, you're gone. But that's 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 not even communism. I mean, there can be consumer protections in a capitalist system. Where you, you would you go need, strip the CEO of his job, of his duty, and I take mean, the stockholder's stock through away? Due, through due process, if a crime is committed Only well, if something. it's a crime. But since it's not a crime in the capitalist system, we've been letting yes. CEOs get okay. away with it for years. Right. And Ian, like, how do you, the point I'm making is communism is not the answer. No, I know. That's why we have a capitalist system, and it's better than communism. But how do you protect the workers? All right. So you pass laws protecting workers. So you, like can, you, you can have a capitalist system that says, specifically, if you intentionally destroy the company to hurt workers— there can be some kind of intervention. The, the, it's not absolute. There's not either capitalism or communism. Or, uh, communism is not the right word for it because yeah. it's political. It's not either capitalism or socialism. There's varying degrees. State controlled, yeah, whatever. So having, having some protection, I think that some protections are, are, are a good thing. But, but ultimately, my point here is, what did anyone think was going to happen? You stop buying Bud Light. There is less money going to Bud Light. They will fire many people. We are not mad at the people who got fired. It is a good thing Bud Light is shrinking. That's I, it? Yeah. And to, to your question is how do you solve this in a capitalist system? You know, the original 
union organizer who was not a communist. He was an immigrant named Samuel Gompers had the solution. And that was for workers to form a union and use their bargaining power to actually acquire the company. So it's the workers that own the company. So they pool their funds, they buy more and more stock, board positions to eventually a situation where you know the founder dies and passes on and then they sell the company to the workers. So when you have a worker-owned company, it provides a lot of protection. Unfortunately, the union movement in this country went into the direction of politics and aiding politics and wanting not to take over management, but to fight with management for purposes of demagoguing and delivering votes to a, a political party. So that's kind of where we lost our way. But there is a solution. It is fully compatible with capitalism. But also, it's a globalist company like in, uh, AB InBev is a Bel- Belgian, is it? Belgian company? It's Brazilian and, but, uh, and Sw- I don't remember where it is. Um, but so how do our American union laws function with a multinational corporation? But, hey, a union, it, it, they're, st- they're still publicly traded. You give that union that had the play, the people working in North Carolina or workers co-op a few board seats, you'd see a different outcome. They can earn yep. those board seats. So, uh, I got some news in this related area, and I, I seek advice from uh, our, our loyal viewers. So as, as many of you know, we're working on a coffee shop, and um, there are some issues related to laws which are causing it to get delayed massively. It's an old building, and so in order to get it up to code and everything, it's a ridiculous amount of work, and it's a historical building, so then there's like, you got to have a lot of paperwork. So we're looking, at, we're looking at Charlestown, West Virginia, not too far away from Harper's Ferry. And there's a building for sale. It is very big. It's right in, this, in, in downtown. And uh, we went and checked it out. Very excited. And uh, there was a restaurant there very recently. They sold and they moved. And I said, how cool would it be to set up one, our, our first or second location, depending on which gets done first, of Cast Brew Coffee here in downtown Charlestown? We went and met with the uh, uh, two agents, our agent and their agent. Checked out the whole building. It is massive. So big, in fact, we might even be able to put a skate shop in the back with a separate entrance. Very excited for this. There's a stage that's already there. Very cool. Afterwards, we went across the street to get breakfast. And while I was getting breakfast at a little diner called Grandma's Diner, there was a newspaper called The Spirit of Jefferson. In it, I learned that Charlestown passed a Pride Month resolution. The city council of Charlestown, West Virginia, voted to declare June Pride Month in support of all they blah, 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 and long-winded garbage. And so I said, man, what do you do? Do you invest in a town that is moving in that direction? Or do we make it a point to not invest in places like this? There's a couple arguments. The first is, if we do invest in this town, we gain influence in this town. We bring people to this town, employees, fans, and we start changing the culture for the better. What if that doesn't work and the town keeps moving in this negative direction? And they end up doing things that are shocking and offensive to our customers, to our friends and fans. And we lose that fight and waste all of our money. The argument against it is maybe, maybe the city needs to see economic fallout from making decisions like this so that the people of the town get angry. So I I wonder, I kind of lean towards the best thing to do is actually invest in the town and buy the business and then put up flags and signs saying like no to all of this invite people down and start shaping the culture with our resources in force, there is the potential of going to the city and saying, so long as you have this resolution in effect, we will not spend a dime here. I feel like that one doesn't necessarily work as much. It may sound good, but it's like if your money was never available to the city in the first place, they don't care what you think. If your money becomes available and you say, but I want to see this thing no longer in, a, in force, you may actually make a difference. So I'm curious what the people, for those of you that are listening, what do you think is the best thing to do? Should we open a shop in Charlestown, West Virginia, even though just now in June, only a couple of weeks ago, five to three, the city voted in support of Pride Month, which is just so insane. There's a whole month dedicated to whatever it is they're doing. Or should we just tell them, go to the agents and tell and, and say, hey, let let the people in the city know when you when you tell them you can't sell the building, it's because we don't want to invest in a town like this. Uh, you know, it's funny you bring this up because I, I, your point of view on this is sort of a um, sort of a, the moral argument of having the conversation with the city. What do you want to do? What consequence do you want to face? And I think that rea- the reality is that there's no entity to have that discussion with and there's no entity that would react to, say, losing a business or entry. I actually do these campaigns all over the country constantly for other things like uh, – somebody wants to build a, a new super center for a, a, a 
big, uh, like a big box store, right? And the community doesn't want it. So I get in and, you know, either help them defeat it or help them bring it in or something like that. It sounds like all you really need to do is flip two city council seats. You get a stealth campaign, you find two good candidates, you fund them and you take it over and you say no more Pride Month. And, you know, that's the exact same way that George Soros took over all these prosecutors. Get a stealth campaign, get a smart political consultant, recruit the candidates, and you flip it, and then you have. But the idea. Well, of, that ain't me. I'm just telling you that's that's maybe, how. You, maybe it's something you could do. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not gonna. But it's not even like a stealth, like underhanded tactic. It's the way of the world. You find people that you believe in, and you elevate them to positions of power to help lead you and your legal system. Look, who do you think got those five people that voted for Pride Month on the city council? People who disagree with you. The and, issue, I yes, more so. I think the issue is the peop, Even though the majority of people oppose all of that stuff, they do not do anything. They don't vote. They don't get up. They don't speak out. They complain in private, and it's really, really frustrating. The idea that West Virginia, the second most Trump supporting state in in the country, would allow woke prosecutors, and they do, in Martinsburg. They had a drag show in public with children and brought them on stage, which is illegal in West Virginia, unquestionably illegal. And no one's doing anything about it. And they all say, it's not my problem. I don't, it's, it's, I have no authority. Sorry, I can't do it. The people, it's, it, it's surprising. A rural county in West Virginia voted for woke district, uh, woke prosecutors. It sounds like there's a void of organization in this world and especially in this country, and particularly in West Virginia, but probably a lot of states, that we need to develop some sort of organization. Like, we need to... If, if it's just like, I, I, sorry, little kids on stage with people waving their junk around out of their face, whatever. Like, someone needs to go in there and not lay down the law, but create order. The average person is still, like, learning about this stuff. Like, most people don't really have a, a deep knowledge about things like queer theory and then you've got but a you, but, whole well, no, no. well you've then you've got like the whole like half of the the country feeding a narrative that this isn't about trying to abuse kids you got the whole media establishment trying to convince people that this isn't about trying to indoctrinate kids into a political mindset but you don't need to understand anything about queer theory to be like hey that child on stage taking his clothes off for money is a very bad thing well, look, the reason this has advanced as far as it has is because the left is well-funded and well-organized. Flipping these back the other way, Martinsville, Martinsville or Martinsburg? Martinsburg. Martinsburg, even Charleston, West Virginia. It wasn't like- Charlestown. Eight, Charles, Charlestown. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it wasn't an eight to one vote. It was a five to three. That means, look, if we can just get the right people informed and turn out to vote, and it's not that hard. It just takes organization, a little bit of funding, and it, it's not that hard. Well, I was like, you know, I was talking to the agent saying, like, I, I'm not sure it's a, it's a good idea to invest in a town that wants to go the direction of Bud Light. Clearly, we are seeing a major backlash to what Bud Light, Target, Starbucks and these other companies have done to the tune of tens of billions of dollars. And I'm supposed to invest my money and start my business in a town that's going that same direction. Well, here's the problem, though. Eventually, you're going to run out of places to escape from. Mm -hmm. So you have to pick exactly a place it. to make your stand and fight and. You know, this is a place where I think uh, an ent if somebody as smart as you could come in and apply the right pressure and become part of that community, I think you could flip it. You, and you, you the, may the, just be the person that could do the it. The degree of pressure I would exert is talking about it on this show, having events at our coffee shop with comedians, putting up flags in the window or something. That may be all it takes to find the additional community organizers to go out and go hit doors and explain it. Because most of the voters who even voted for the five people, they probably didn't even know that they voted that way. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.